Galarian Articuno is honestly crazier than people think. It's got pretty solid special offense, special bulk and speed, and a unique psychic and flying typing. But here's what we do. We can set up an agility doubling our speed, then upon being hit by a super effective attack, we activate the weakness policy which doubles both physical and special attack. We can run Calm Mind for even further setup if possible, or even its ability competitive which doubles its special attack if its stats are lowered. After all that, stored power becomes one of the strongest moves ever. This is a 20 power stab move that gets plus 20 for each of the user's stat boosts, meaning that pretty much nothing can take it. We use Terra Fighting Terror Blast for insane offensive coverage, and let me tell you, do not mess with Galarian Articuno. Look, I was surprised to see how low usage Galarian Articuno is. It just feels like one of those guys that whenever I go up against it, I'm always very afraid. It's a very fun Pokemon to use that has crazy potential. So if you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Ogre Pond Wellspring. And she is pretty scary considering I decided to lead off with a Mamoswine. I decide that I should probably not risk it for the biscuit to just try to get some stealth rock up. So I'm gonna go into a pair of guys that's more fit to handle the job and I decide to bring in the defensive wheezing here. So I imagine they probably don't go for the swords dance setup here, but if they do, I can obviously just threaten with like a will-o-wisp. So I bring in the wheezing. They're actually gonna go for the horn leech and right to the balls doesn't hurt that bad. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but they also touch the rocky helmet. I like to imagine wheezing has three little funny rocky helmets on all the little little guys there but they now decide to go for the ivy cudgel which is gonna knock me down below half and then i end up missing a will-o-wisp because it's actually called willow miss and i don't know if anybody's ever actually connected on one of those so they now decide to actually just go for the u-turn you're gonna pivot into something else do take a little bit more rocky helmet chip which is always nice because this ogre pond is a damn menace but unfortunately for me they decide to switch into the blissey just expecting another will-o-wisp and now breakfast is ruined. The, the, the eggs are burnt, and obviously this thing does not care about being burnt at all, especially because it can just switch out. It naturally cured, but also this thing's not gonna physical attack its way out of a wet paper bag anyway. So with the burn there, I realize Weezing can't really do anything here, but Blissey's kind of a good opportunity for me to go back into the Mamoswine. I figure the worst case scenario, they paralyze something, and obviously Mamoswine's ground type ass does not care about being paralyzed. So I decided to bring this in because I do want to try to prioritize getting up the Stealth Rock. It's going to help out for you know, potential Focus Sashes, but also just limit switches and just do some, some Stealth Rock shenanigans. So it turns out they actually decide to go for the Ice Beam, and I am extra thick. I don't know if you can tell, but I got some thick fat that's going to reduce damage from Fire and Ice moves. So it's not like Blissey was going to hit hard anyway, but it does pretty much nothing. And I just decided to go ahead and set up the old Stealth Rock here. So they actually end up staying in, which is... Mostly just fine by me. I don't really, I'm not super afraid of what uh, freaking white girl with a booty over here can even do to me. So it turns out they're actually just going to go for the flamethrower. While it is super effective, the thick fat helps out a little bit there. And we don't take a whole lot of damage. So we're getting chipped a little bit on the Mamoswine. My sash is broken, but at this point I was kind of just here to set up my rocks. And be there for some earthquake coverage and things like that. So at this point, I'm just going to go for the earthquake. Nice little stab quake. Does a bunch of damage to a Blissey, even if it's max physical defense, which... Most of the time they are, and it does end up taking that relatively nicely. Fires off one more flamethrower, luckily does not burn me, and I can at least live to see another day here. So I don't know if they decide, they want to decide to you know, conserve the Blissey. It is obviously a nice little special tank action, and I'm like, they probably do want to save it. I'm going to end up going for another Earthquake regardless, because they don't super need Mamoswine here, so it's kind of fine. Now, they do end up switching out, and they're actually going to end up bringing back in the Ogre Pond on the incoming Earthquake, because it can live it. However, this thing's taken a bunch of chip already, take some stealth rock, and then that earthquake is actually gonna be able to put it into a range to where I'm like, hey, this is fine. I can now just go for a nice little ice shard, prioritize the shit out of them, and an ice shard is gonna be able to take care of the ogre pond, which is great because that thing, again, is she, very scary. I honestly hate that thing, so that feels pretty solid. Now here's where things are gonna get interesting. So they decide to switch into Zamazenta. This thing is annoying because it dauntless shields, gets a defense boost. And I'm like, well, I'm just gonna basically sack the Mamoswine at this point. Probably should have Ice Sharded to do, like, something, but it didn't really seem that worth it. As they finish me off with a Crunch. And with that, I get myself a nice little idea here. So, this thing is physically defensive. It's at full health. 
And Zamazenta is a damn monster. But what I can do is bring in the Articuno, who is not that Arctic. We're in fact, obviously not Ice type, but being psychic, it's looking like I feel like they want to crunch me. And that's exactly what we're trying to bait here because as I threatened it with the psychic, I just decided to go for the agility here. Now they are going to crunch and check this out. So the crunch gets the defense drop, which activates competitive, gives me a plus two boost to special attack, and then activates a weakness policy, giving me another plus two to both physical and special attack. And <laughs> I get the agility off. I mean, now I have plus two speed, and there may have never have been a more satisfying turn for a Galarian Articuno because I'm faster than everything. Stored power is at insane power at this point. And moral of the story, Galarian Articuno is ready to see the world burn here. So I'm just gonna go for the stored power. Now it is risky because they obviously do have dark types in the form of things like this Ting Lu, but I'm also not super worried about that because as young Bullhead comes in here, it does have the Vessel of Ruin, weakening the special attack a bit, and doesn't take anything from a stored power. But that is fine because while we do not have fists, after a weakness policy boost and like the competitive, I'm feeling like a Terra fighting blast to the face is gonna break that bowl into pieces. I'm at plus four special attack, and that bowl is already cracked down the middle of the forehead. We're just gonna bust it all the way through. So, we do go ahead, activate the Terra here. This Galarian Articuno is one of the, it's a mon that benefits from Terra literally so much, because obviously covering for weaknesses, but being an offensive fighting type now is kind of insane, especially when they have the dark types. So, we're gonna put the fist on our bird head, and a Terra Blast comes through. Remember, I'm at plus four, there is Vassal of Ruin. So I'm like, hey, this kills, right? It actually lives with one HP, which is the craziest thing ever. However, they actually switch, expected me to switch out and they go for the Stealth Rock. At least I imagine they expect the switch. If their only attacking move was something like Ruination, they probably had that or Earthquake, which they can't Earthquake me. And Ruination only does half. So Stealth Rock was probably their play expecting a switch there. And that is amazing because now we don't care about the Stealth Rocks under us. I can go for another Terra Blast and that is going to be able to take out the Ting Lu. So punch the hell out of him. Dead Ting Lu, and that's kind of their special tank at this point. And now we get to see what their answer is going to be to the craziest Galarian bird there's ever been. So looking at what they have left, Articuno's feeling pretty confident here. Now they decide to bring in the Petrarunt, and I'm just going to go ahead and bust out the stored power. There is all sorts of power stored within, and that absolutely just obliterates the little poison Petraberry fella. Did not even stand a chance for like a second there, which is amazing. So again, I'm faster than literally everything after an agility. That plus two boost doubling our speed is nuts. And while I do have Zamazenta, who is no pretty known for taking hits, what this little fella is not going to be able to do is take a stab stored power with, uh, <laughs> with all the boosts that this thing gave me. So stored power just absolutely just deletes the guy, which is amazing. And I'm kind of just surprised that they haven't ran at this point because sometimes the Articuno will do that to people. Now they do have the Darkrai in the back and while they obviously know I have the Terra Fighting Blast that's not super ideal. They could potentially have Sucker Punch who was for some reason physical but then we just resist it anyway. They in fact do not go for a Terra or a priority and I can just go ahead and beat the devil at him. That's gonna take care of the Darkrai and now they do actually have one Pokemon left so it's like you might as well just let, you might as well just let me do it. It's extremely satisfying to kill Blissies let alone with a special attack so that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and do, and there's going to be some cracked eggs up in this bitch. We're going to go for that Fighting Terra Blast. Takes care of the Blissey, and uh, that is going to be the game. So that could not have gone any better in terms of showing exactly what you're supposed to try to do at the Galarian Articuno. And the competitive activation is just the cherry on top. Honestly, probably unnecessary, but you'd just love to see it anyway. So that's going to do it for game one. Galarian Articuno is literally unfair, and that's going to bring us into game number two. So here's the thing, if you've made it this far into the video while you're eating your lunch over there and you haven't hit the like button, you, 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 more, hit the like button is moral of the story. And with that, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the number one stanced up homegirl at the Salazzle, as I of course have the Mammoth Swine here with that Focus Sash and she's looking small over there. Obviously we don't really care about this matchup. I can threaten it out with an earthquake all damn day. But I'm just going to go ahead and set up the old Stealth Rock here. As they are going to actually end up switching, they're going to bring out the Rillaboom, who is annoying. Comes in just ready to play the drums. It's 3 a.m. and nobody wants to hear that shit. However, I, I just get up my Stealth Rock, which, you know, is nice. So this thing is kind of a bad matchup where this thing does threaten me with the grass coverage. I threaten it with the ice coverage. But as I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what? I should maybe conserve Mammoth Swine. I can keep that Sash intact as long as they don't have any hazard set up. And I kind of just has have a pretty easy and free switch 
into our weird deformed buddy who looks like he's on the verge of death, our, our freaking wheezing over here. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I decided to go into the wheezing, and I'm like, well, it's actually kind of nice. I can threaten it with sludge bombs, will wisps and honestly, wheezing's role on this team is kind of just to be a punching bag and something that's easy to switch into stuff. So they decided to go for the knockoff, which does get rid of my Rocky helmet, which was a fashion statement, which is just kind of rude. And at this point, I'm fully expecting this thing to most likely, you know, switch out of here. So I just decided to go for the Will-O-Wisp. I figure if they stay, it's fine. If they switch, something doesn't want to be burned, probably. Turns out they're actually going to go for the drum beating and whip me a little bit. Super kink doesn't do anything, which is weird. Maybe they expected me to predict the, them to switch. I don't know. Regardless, I burned the guy. And I'm like, well, now you're going to be doing absolutely nothing to anything. They, they do obviously still threaten... You know, some stuff with the priority grassy glide. And also the grassy terrain being up is generally just kind of annoying. So it takes some damage from the burn. And at this point, I'm like, well, I'm just literally going to go for a sludge bomb. If you stay in at this point, Buddy has absolutely no idea. So they do switch out Harambe and RIP. They decide now to go back into Salazzle, which is a pretty good switch for them. Just because obviously it's not going to be taking any damage from a sludge bomb. But also this thing can do a lot to me with like a flamethrower. And also, I know Salazzle to be the kind of fella that likes to potentially nasty plot, go for things like substitutes, and can also even poison anything. It has that uh, corrosion ability, which is kind of crazy. So, at this point, I just decided to switch out here. Weezing does still look nice as a physical wall. We haven't taken too much damage. I'm just going to go right into the Mamoswine. I kind of expect them to go for something like a substitute here, and I know that at least with Mamoswine being at max HP, I can not worry about you know, dying. I can go for that Earthquake. Bad news about an Earthquake, as they actually go for the Encore, which fails because I switch, is that uh, with the Grassy Terrain up, it actually reduces Earthquake damage. However, that thing is in fact four times weak to Earthquake anyway, so I'm like, that, that's kind of fine. Now, the Grass actually does go away anyway, so it, it doesn't even matter, and I'm just talking nonsense. So, I am just going to end up going for that Earthquake. I figure, you know, maybe they switch, but it doesn't look like they have much that wants to do with it. They actually end up going for the Substitute here, just to probably scout out what I'm going to do. And again, Salazzles like to go for substitutes and just be fast and annoying and stuff. So I Earthquake the absolute hell out of the old beanbag. And uh, it, it realizes it's probably not a good matchup to stay in here as they are going to be faster. Obviously, I'm thick fat, so I can take a flamethrower. And I'm even focused out anyway. So I'm like, there's kind of no loss scenario here as I'm just going to continue just throwing quakes out. So they do actually end up switching out. The bad news is they could go back into the Rillaboom. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Rillaboom is far less scary now just because of that burn so as i do earthquake after the grassy surge gets set up which i feel like not a lot of people know that grassy surge reduces damage from earthquake it's actually kind of an interesting effect there's so many things that you just they don't tell you i don't know but earthquake obviously basically just heals the guy and at this point i'm like okay so i don't really need to switch out here i could go back to wheezing but then I, i'm just like yeah, who needs to switch all day i'm just gonna go for an ice school crash because if i can get myself a position on bringing in like galarian otakuno on something it looks pretty nice in this matchup so they actually end up switching they're probably expecting me to go into wheezing like i did last time so they kind of play the safe bet and go into the milo tick which is nice because obviously it also resists the ice school crash as well and this thing on top of the grassy terrain is gonna be healing so at this point, I have a couple different options. I just decided to go into the Serena. I feel like, you know, I can actually maybe take advantage of this grassy terrain being up. And I can even boost my grass damage. This Serena is kind of a... She, she got a big booty, but she's kind of weird. So, <laughs> they go for the Scald, which is scary. But it doesn't actually burn me, so that's fine. But the idea with this is that I can go ahead and bust out Trailblaze, which is able to boost my speed. And then I also have a Leechy Berry. Once I get down, I can potentially go for like an Endure, get to 1 HP, activate Leechy Berry. And then I don't have, uh, they, they can't hit me with priority because of Queenly Majesty. So that's the idea with this arena. Time to activate. They actually decide to switch into freaking Garchomp though. So as I go for that Trailblaze, doesn't really do any damage to the fella. And also, the bad thing about Garchomp is this thing freaking hurts to touch. It has rough skin and a rocky helmet. So guy is just sharp as hell. And looking at the damage we took, I'm kind of like, well, this is not going to end well for me. While I do have the coverage with Triple Axel, I know I'm going to end up killing myself with the recoil. But that's sometimes the like, the price of doing business. Baby, I do get hit by that rough skin and rocky helmet. But then I just Triple Axel him again. And then I get hit by some rough skin and some rocky helmet. And I'm about tore the hell up at this point. It does actually activate my Lychee Berry, which is kind of cool. However, seeing myself at 36 HP there, I'm like, well, yeah, after this Rocky Helmet and the next hit, my ass is definitely dead. But I figured it was kind of worth it for me to just end up taking care 
of the Garchomp because now we have ourselves a good old fashioned empty battlefield, which is always fun. And what we're gonna do here is try to at least capitalize on this opportunity to bring in the Articuno because honestly, this Articuno is it's hard to counterplay sometimes. If you've if you've run out of some assets, it's it's a tough fella to try to stop. So I do bring in the Psychic Kuno, and uh, we are looking pretty ready for whatever they got here. Now they don't have the Stealth Rock, which is nice, so I don't take any chip. And as they go into the Rillaboom, I saw that this thing used knockoff on Weezing earlier. So honestly, it looks pretty enticing for them to go for that knockoff, and that's exactly what we're looking for here because. I can go for the agility. I, I know that I'm going to be faster than the Rillaboom anyway, but the agility now makes me faster than their entire team. And uh, they actually do go for the knockoff. Now, fun thing about knockoff, when on a weakness policy, it actually uses the weakness policy first instead of knocking it off. It seems to me like it should just get rid of it. But that's fantastic for us because now we have plus two speed, plus two attacks, and we're sitting at stored power being pretty insanely powerful uh, pretty much already. So. This Rillaboom is now definitely in danger. We have all of the offense in the world, and when you're faster than everything after an agility, the only thing that can really do any damage is gonna be some priority, which seems like they're lacking. So, they decide now to switch, and they're like, oh shit, this bird is coming for me. They decide to go into the Milotic, just because this thing has you know some special bulk. However, a stored power with the stab and all the boosts is just gonna delete that guy, so. <laughs> Down goes the Milotic. However, we do still have our work cut out for us because of this thing. Freaking Lady Gaga comes in here looking like a damn turkey. And I, it's, it's a weird matchup because obviously this thing resists both of my offensive options. However, as I'm looking at this with all the boosts I have, a stored power, unless for whatever reason this thing is specially defensive, honestly still kills it. And also I don't think they have anything that can one shot me in return. So. They decide to go for the Protect, that is basically to not only stall a turn, but also is going to get it back to full and activate its speed boost. So at plus one speed, it is going to be fast. However, you are not faster than a plus two Galarian Articuno, which is amazing. So now it's time to see what this bad boy is actually made of because I can go for the stored power and it actually just straight up kills the guy in one hit, which is <laughs> honestly amazing. Resisted hits, killing things at full. It's my favorite thing ever, and this Articuno is pretty damn good at it. So, here's the thing, they do also still have an Umbreon, known to be pretty damn specially defensive, and obviously I've been stored powering out here, but it's time to finally bust out the inevitable Terra fighting and uh, see if we can go ahead and blast the Umbreon here. He likely only is going to go for like a dark move here, and then going for that Terra fighting makes it die we resist that anyway, so... We're feeling like Thanos just snapping people out of existence out here because as you will find out, this Umbreon was not prepared for that many fists all at once. Pause, and that is gonna be able to take care of the Umbreon. And uh, at this point, Articuno basically just runs through their entire squad. So they're gonna go ahead and bring in their uh, Salazzle once again, who is obviously just allergic to this stored power. And then they're just gonna go ahead and run. So Galarian Articuno has put fear in people's hearts and that's what we came out here to do and it's always a good time so that's going to be the end of the video thank you guys so much for watching it's been a honestly this, this pokemon is so fun to set up and it's really not that hard to get going i don't know this thing it's it's fun so thank you very much for watching and i will catch you guys next time peace out